This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. We're now going to go through and look at goodwill. So we've gone through and looked at how to work out the non-controlling interest. So that's looking at the ownership that the non-controlling interest have within the subsidiary. So a separate line item that is shown within equity. But there is also an additional asset that we will need to record on consolidation. That additional asset is goodwill. Now, where does that goodwill arise from and how is it calculated? Well, what will happen is that when the parent acquires the subsidiary and gains control, so has the power to direct those activities, it will commonly pay more than what the actual subsidiary is worth. So we're the parents, we're paying to get control of the assets and of the liabilities, and we will pay higher than what the value of those assets and liabilities are perceived to be within the subsidiary's financial statements. Why would we do that? Well, when we're purchasing the subsidiary and gaining control, the extra that we pay above the value of the assets and liabilities is because there is that unrecognized asset within the subsidiary's financial statements. A subsidiary has probably been trading for, for several years and it has a good reputation with its customers. So there's probably some customer loyalty. There will be repeat business every single year from, from, from specific customers that we have. That's a benefit that we are getting within the business, but you can't recognize the benefit that you are getting from that business within the individual company account of the subsidiary. Because if you go back to the definitions of intangibles and the definitions of assets, you don't control that customer loyalty, do we? So therefore it cannot be recognized. How would you even measure that customer loyalty? Okay, very difficult to do. So it's not recognized within the subsidiary's books. Likewise, the reputation, the brand that you have associated with the subsidiary, you know, that will be recognised in the individual accounts of the subsidiary because uh, we, we don't know how much to measure it at, do we? So it's not recognised in S's books, but because we are now paying an amount on acquisition of the subsidiary, we can recognise these assets, but they're going to be recognised at the moment and consumed within this asset called goodwill okay so we're going to calculate the goodwill it's going to be shown as an asset because it's what the group controls we can measure it reliably because we know how much we're paying uh, we know how much the net assets are worth so therefore it can be recognized within the group sfp uh, it is an asset it is a non-current asset because it is going to provide you benefits for longer than one year isn't it okay so therefore this goodwill is going to appear as an intangible non-current asset in the group statement of financial position the question there is how do we go through and calculate it uh well it's what we've seen before from the days of financial accounting but to give it its technical calculation we look at the fair value of the consideration so to you and i effectively at this moment in time that is what we have paid uh, but there could be other forms of consideration with regards to the issue of shares uh, or maybe there's some contingent consideration that's payable at some point in the future depending upon if certain criteria are met but let's just keep it simple for now it's the cash okay uh, however, that only values the subsidiary based upon what we've paid. We want to look at the entire value of the subsidiary. So we add in the non-controlling interest at acquisition. So that's effectively giving you the entire value of the subsidiary. What? what we think it's worth and what the NCI think it's worth as well. So valuing the sub as a whole. We then go through that and deduct the fair value
of S's net assets at acquisition. And once you deduct the fair value of S's net assets at acquisition, it goes through there and gives you the goodwill. So just note this is goodwill as calculated under IFRS 3. Okay, so it's such an important calculation. Uh, it's there within the business combination standard IFRS 3 and it tells us there how to calculate it. Okay, so that's the calculation. We need to go through there and put some numbers within it, don't we? So the best way to go through and deal with that is to have a look at the example that asks us to calculate the goodwill. Uh, and that asks us to calculate it based upon two methods. Uh, first of all, your proportionate share method. And then secondly, the fair value method. Okay. Uh, so it, it's talking about how we measure the non-controlling interest. So here, when we're looking at the NCI at acquisition, that NCI at acquisition is either going to be based upon this proportionate share of net assets method or the fair value method. Okay. So the first one looks at the proportionate share, the second one at the fair value. So let's have a look at what we've got. We're told that the parent buys 75% of the equity shares in a subsidiary for $156,000. So we have control at 75%, so greater than the 50. Uh, the non-controlling interest therefore own the remaining 25%. Uh, the 156000 that has been paid uh, would have credited bank debited the investment so that then is the fair value of the consideration, the cash that's been paid. Uh, the remaining shares were valued at 52000 so that's going to be useful uh, when it comes to looking at the fair value method because that's saying the fair value of the remaining 25% is at $52,000. We don't have to actually calculate it ourselves based upon the percentage the NCI own, the number of shares that converts into an S's share price. Last bit is they're telling us the net asset to acquisition were $170,000. So again, that's going to be useful because here, uh, that's going to help us with S's net asset to acquisition. And also it will help us when we use the proportionate share method because we're going to take the non-controlling interest share of those net assets. So if we go through that, and use the proportionate share method. We're going to look at the fair value of the consideration, which here is 156,000 dollars. Uh, we will then go through and add on the NCI at acquisition, which in this instance is 25% of the 170,000. Uh, is that forty two thousand five hundred? Okay. Uh, well, I can then go through there and add those two together, can't I? You don't have to, but it's just to demonstrate what's happening. Uh, is that one nine eight five hundred? Because what we're doing there is we're saying that look, that fair value consideration represents our seventy five percent holding. The NCI own 25%, so the total subsidiary is, is valued, is worth 198500 Okay, That's what we all think it is worth. However, what is it worth compared to what's in the books? Well, 
uh, S is net asset to acquisition. Uh, 170,000. So even though we only control 75%, uh, we're going to go through there and deduct the net assets in full. Because then we're comparing like for like, aren't we? Okay. Uh, and then when you total that up, does that give me 28,000? Five hundred. That is my goodwill based upon the proportionate share method. Okay. Uh, you'll need to commit the pro forma to memory. You will do. Don't worry. The issue then comes in putting in the numbers. But we'll we'll leave that until later on. Uh, we then need to go through there and look at the goodwill based upon your fair value. So here again, same pro forma where we start off with the fair value of the consideration. So nothing is different there. That's 156,000. We will add on the non-controlling interest at acquisition, which I will do in a moment. But I just want to show you how little changes in the calculation because we then deduct S's net assets at acquisition and that's the same is it there at the 170,000 okay, so, so those two figures the 156 the 170 are no different to what we had before, okay, under the proportionate share method. However, the key that you have now is that the non-controlling interest at acquisition is measured at fair value. So we know that we paid for 75% at 156. The remaining 25%, what is that worth based upon the fair value well here it's 52,000 isn't it so what we've got there is the 52,000 uh, so 156 plus 52 does that give me 208,000 and if I deduct 170 gives me the 38,000 Okay. So what you can see there is that we've got 38,000 as the goodwill under the fair value method. So there's going to be two different figures potentially within your group SFP for goodwill, depending upon which way you choose to measure the non-controlling interest. Okay. If you choose it under the proportionate share, it's going to be lower. If it's there under the fair value, it's going to be higher. And that higher goodwill figure will be reflected by a higher non-controlling interest figure within equity. So the higher asset on the top is balanced out by the higher equity figure down below. Okay. Uh, so we just need to go through and just add in a little bit on top of what we've done. And look at this 38,000. Because what we've got there, if we take this 38,000 of goodwill okay and split it out you'll, you'll see where we're heading in a moment because what we can go through there is we can take that 38,000 and look of that 38,000 what belongs to the parent and what belongs to the NCI Okay, so what we've got there is we're going to go through there and look at very loosely at what we've paid compared to what we've got. Okay, 
Uh, because of that 38,000, P has paid, is it 156,000? Um, what the NCI have paid, because they haven't paid anything. They still just own 25% of the shares, and those 25% are worth 52,000. Okay. Uh, what they have then got, well, P has got its share, so is that 75%. Of those net assets. That's what it owns. Okay. It, it controls all of them. That's what effectively it owns, doesn't it? Okay. That's what it's got in return. Yeah, for paying 75% of the, the shares, they've got an ownership interest of 75% of those net assets. Uh, if we total that up, this is where it gets quite clever. So that gives you 28,500. And then if we look at what the NCI have got, I think they get 42,500 of those net assets. Being the 25% of the 170,000. Uh, 170,000, 25%, 42,500. There we go. Excellent. Uh, and therefore, what you've got that belongs to the non-controlling interest of that goodwill is a 9,500. If you were to add them together, if you were to add the 28,500 and the 9,500, you would get $38,000. Okay. Why have we done that? Well, effectively, what we've got here that 38,000 is sometimes referred to as the full goodwill. I.e. the goodwill that we see on the face of the group statement of financial position is not just a parent share, but also the non-controlling interest share. Because if you're controlling an asset, you control all of it, don't we? And this was the issue that we had before the standard IFRS 3 was updated. Yeah, what we used to go through and do is that the methodology that was used uh, to calculate the goodwill took that calculation, but went through there and used the proportionate share. And that proportionate share of 28,500 is effectively just what is now referred to as the partial goodwill. Okay. So the partial goodwill method just went through there and showed what goodwill the parent actually owned. Okay, here at 28,500, which, which doesn't match up to what we're doing within the rest of the group statement of financial position, does it? In the rest of the group statement of financial position, let's focus on the assets. We have control of S's assets, so we consolidate them in full on a line-by-line -line basis. We add them in 100%. PPE, inventory, receivables, cash. But when we were looking at goodwill, we were actually only showing what the parent share of goodwill actually was. So what the standard went through and did is said, well, what we need to go through and do is look at a method whereby the non-controlling interest is valued at fair value. If we value the non-controlling interest at fair value, which we've done there at the 52,000, that gives us a higher value of goodwill. And that higher value of goodwill is the full goodwill because that takes into account not just P share of the goodwill, but also the non-controlling interest share of the goodwill. Okay, so it's a much more accurate, would that be the best way to, to determine it? A much more... Uh, relevant method of being able to go through there and show the goodwill on the face of the group statement of financial position. How can that be examined? Well, in reality, in the real world, you have a choice of whether or not you use the proportionate share of net assets method, which will give you the partial goodwill. So here we use the proportionate share and with the proportionate share, 
that gave us this partial goodwill, didn't it? Okay, uh, so you can choose that for an acquisition. Or alternatively, if you use the fair value method to value the NCI, that will give you the full goodwill. So you can choose it on an acquisition by acquisition basis. That's what the rules state within the standard. A little bit of inconsistency. I'd have thought that it would be much better to, to stick with a consistent methodology. But you have to bear in mind it might be difficult to fair value the non-controlling interest when you acquire a subsidiary that, that, that may not be listed. Okay. So, so that's the crux of goodwill. There are two ways of being able to calculate it. Your proportionate share of net assets method and the fair value method. And you will need to read the questions carefully within the exam to make sure that you calculate it based upon the correct methodology.